Hello everyone, my name is George Farmer and I'm here today at Dunalay HQ to aquascape this Nano Cube. There's a little bit of a story behind it. Um, I was invited along by uh, Volker Jochen and Stefan Hummel to visit the local forest to gain some inspiration and use that inspiration and transfer it into an aquascape today. So I hope you enjoy the video. So my first step is to install a small layer of Dunalay Burma gravel. This is a, a planter hunter gravel and it mimics the, the sort of sandstone sands and gravels that we saw when we were around yesterday. So I'm going to have a, the front portion is going to be uh, this Burma gravel and then behind that I'm going to have the soil and that's going to be separated by some sandstone. So what I'm going to do is going to pour a small amount of the Burma gravel at the front So we've installed our first layer of Burma gravel and now I'm going to install our stone which is a really interesting stone, it's called red sandstone and it's found locally all around this area and actually yesterday as part of our expedition scape hunting we went and saw absolutely loads of this stuff, saw some great kind of monuments and you'll see another video about that. So. When I'm installing my stone, I always start off with the largest piece, and I call this the master stone or the focal stone. And I look at it and I think, what's the most interesting side? How do I think that's going to look most natural in the aquascape and most interesting? So I think if we have, it's quite a, there's quite a lot of vertical elements to the tank. So I think if we deliberately try to use that to our advantage. And then put some smaller stones around it to support it. And again, look at the most interesting side. It's quite an interesting piece there. Okay, so I've moved around the stones a little bit, had a small adjustment, and I've just got some extra small stones there just to add to the foreground just to help create a little bit more interest. I'm just going to come around the front so I can see what I'm doing properly. And with aquascaping, the details really matter. Lots of, lots of small details add up to make big, a big difference. Okay, so we've got the rocks pretty much where we want them. Now it's time to add our soil to the background, just behind the rocks. So I'm just going to pour it in gently. This is Dunalay Scaper soil. Very good product. Helps to feed the plant roots. Helps to buffer the pH around about 6, 6.5. Doesn't need pre-rinsing. Next step is to install our wood. So I've got some lovely driftwood here. It will try to float, what I've done is cable tied a stone to the bottom which will stop it from floating. You can also um, add stones on top of the wood once it's been placed in the soil or you can obviously pre-soak the wood which will allow it to, to sink straight away. So I'll start off with the, the biggest piece of wood and I'm going to help to accentuate the vertical nature of the aquascape by using this style of wood. And uh, this is actually inspired from the trees that I saw yesterday. Lots and lots of tall vertical trees. So that's the wooden rocks in position and now we're ready for our planting. So we're ready to plant. So all I'm gonna do now is just wet the soil at the back. And that just makes planting much easier. So ready to plant now. First thing I'm going to do is plant some lovely aerial cowlon. This has been grown to immerse. I've already separated it into individual portions. That's just a case of inserting it into the soil with our tweezers. And I've also got some Eleocaris acicularis, which I'm going to mix in with the aerial cowlon, and it will help create a really nice natural texture. Grab it between my tweezers, and then. Gently push it into the soil. I 
Now, same process with the Eleocaris acicularis. Then I'm going to plant it in between the Eleocaulon. It's a really good idea to mix textures in an aquascape, it just helps it look more natural. In nature, we very rarely see the same texture in a, in a large space. It's often mixed with other plants, other textures. So I like to do that in the aquascape. Next we have a brand new plant species called Eleocaris zingu. I've never seen this before and then they will be bringing it into production fairly soon. I've already separated it from its pot into individual portions. It's very similar to the other Eleocaris that grows, grows really tall, but I think it has slightly thinner blades. So, as before, simply get our tweezers, grab the plant, and then insert it into our soil. I'll normally push it in about two to three centimetres. As long as the roots are in contact with the soil, then it's fine. And then this is a beautiful background plant. I'm gonna, it's going to cover the whole background, hopefully. I do do a lot of aquascapes, and it's actually really nice to, to, to use different plants. But more importantly, it's, it's nice to get inspiration from, from different sources. So, yesterday, like I said in the beginning of the video, I was in the in a forest local to, to the Denali headquarters. And, you know, I was just absolutely, I was surprised to start with, absolutely blown away by the variety of, of nature, so loads of nice beautiful rocks, moss covered rocks, loads of obviously loads of trees, but loads of like fallen branches covered in moss and tree roots growing over rocks and it's just such a, a huge amount of inspiration for anyone that's into aquascaping, particularly if they're into the nature aquarium style, which is my favourite style. And I took loads of you know, loads of photos, loads of video footage, which you'll be able to see on the Dunlea YouTube channel and Facebook channel soon. And it was a real privilege to be invited along with, with Volker and Stefan. I got a chance to improve my German as well. And I think the guys got a opportunity to improve their English, so Everyone's a winner. So hopefully you can see already that it's taking on a very vertical nature, this aquascape. And I think that's enhanced by the tall nature of the aquarium itself. It's not quite a cube, it's actually taller than it is wide and long. And I think to use the vertical elements of the planting and the wood really help to enhance that vertical element. Okay, last plant. Did you find a space for it? So. Next job is to attach some moss. So I've already got some beautiful mosses attached to some um, small pieces of stone here. I believe this is a Taxophila and Barbari. There's actually, um, if you look really carefully, there's some Ricardia as well on there, which I think looks really great as the two mosses mix together. So we'll just place them strategically at the front of the scape. And now the, the moss will eventually spread over the other stones and look really natural. Next I'm going to glue some mosses onto the wood. I've already prepared a load of individual portions here and I've got some super glue here. That's a really simple case of just putting a tiny blob of super glue on the area that you want to glue the moss onto. So I'll start at the front, just 
here. And then get your portion of moss. And then you just press, hold it for a few seconds, and it stays there. And then we just repeat that process. So that's our mosses attached. I've used uh, two species. One's Taxifilum barbari, uh, common name for that is Java moss. And the other one is a Vesicularis species, which is Triangle moss. Next, I'm actually going to attach some Hygrophila pinnitifida. Beautiful plant, actually an Indian stem plant, and one of the only stem plants that we can generally attach to the decor. So just prepare it really simply. It's wrapped in a coconut shell, coconut fibres. So we just separate the stems from the fibre. it first. And then a top tip is to, to encourage new growth we can give it a really good trim so about there and then I'm going to position it just off five out of third so about a focal point around here it goes a nice, under good light, it will turn a nice browny red colour. So perfect for giving a, a sense of a, a strong focal point. And there's actually a little hole in the wood. So I'm just poking it gently in there. Otherwise I could use glue where I could uh, tie it on the string. But if I've got a hole there, it's an ideal position, then I'll use it. Just makes life much easier. Now I'm going to add some Bucephalandra brownie, beautiful plant, quite new to the hobby. I've already prepared it, removed it from its pot, and we've got the individual portions there. And like before, I'm going to see where I can just push it in so it holds itself rather than gluing it or wrapping it with string. So I'll just get my portion, have a look at some suitable places. There's a piece there, I'll just poke it in there. So I love Boots of Blunger. it's really easy to grow, it doesn't need much light. Originally from Borneo, but then they grow their own. So I'm a big fan of uh, sustainably produced plants rather than taking them from the wild. I think it's really important to uh, get your plants responsibly. Um, a lot of the Bucephalandra in the hobby it is taken from wild, wild where perhaps not much care is taken over the, the natural habitat which can potentially um, jeopardise future, you know, the future of the hobby and the future of the plants. So that's the planting complete now. The uh, last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit more detail. Uh, these are locally collected branches that we found out yesterday. And I'm just going to just insert them into various faces. It just helps to create a little bit more detail, a little bit more of a natural effect. I'll just wedge them in there so hopefully they'll, they won't float. They're dead, um, so they won't affect the water quality. They've been tested before in previous aquascapes at Dunley, so I know they're aquarium safe. So I think it's important to talk about the details that we added at the end. You know, they've, they've transformed the aquascape from something that was still quite pretty to something quite different, something a lot more detail, something that's a lot more naturalistic, and that's really what we're trying to achieve with, a, with this nature aquarium. And I think it's really poignant, really quite appropriate that we've the, the details we've used are actually something that we've collected uh, from our little scape hunting expedition yesterday. So the next step is to fill up with water, fit our equipment, and then that's the aquascape complete. 
Okay guys, that's the Aquascape complete. Uh, I'm really pleased with it. Um, it's gonna grow in to be really beautiful and mature. We've got, it's quite easy. Most of them are slow growing plants. Um, Volker Jochum will be maintaining the tank, so I'm sure it will look stunning in, a, in two or three months. And yeah, that, that's the video done guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed aquascaping and the whole experience of being here at Denalé for the last two days to, to get that inspiration from outside, experience nature and transfer it into this beautiful nano cube. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Take care and keep on scaping. Cheerio.